going to Iswan's um, uh, question about brothers in Indonesia using music for forms of da'wah. So is this permissible in Islam or not? First of all, we have to know the ruling in Islam over music. Now, why would someone say music is haram? Everybody likes music. Everybody enjoys music. Everybody enjoys singing and dancing and being cheerful. So why would someone say it's haram? It's very simple. To know the ruling on, over something, we have to go back to the Quran and Muslim. We are Muslims. We have to go back to the Quran and to the Sunnah. Do we get our religion from out of the Quran and Sunnah? No. Do we have any uh, um, a wali or any uh, uh, someone, Mahdi or this or that, who would answer uh, to us other than what the Quran and Sunnah? Definitely not. But before continuing this, uh, answering uh, Iswan's question, question, and we will conclude this, inshallah. I think that we've uh, we, we lost Yahya. Going back to Iswan's question, as a Muslim Iswan, that talk about music and singing in general, we will not go into that because people say it can mean this and it can mean that. But if you go to the Sunnah, the most authentic book for Muslims, any Muslim Sunni, you would ask him, you would say Sahih al-Bukhari. This is the most authentic book on earth after the Quran. And in Sahih al-Bukhari, the Prophet ﷺ tells us that there will be people of my ummah making haram things halal. And they would make uh, uh, adultery, fornication. They would make silk. They would make consuming intoxicants, khamr. And music instruments halal. Four things. The Prophet ﷺ told us that there will come people who would make these haram things halal. So the Prophet is the one who told us that music is haram. And the evidence behind it is overwhelming. Ya Akhi, let's assume that there is no Quran on this topic and there is no hadith on this topic. What's the ruling on music? We go to our four great imams, great schools of thought. We find that the consensus of the school of thought of Abu Hanifa of Imam Malik ibn Anas, Imam Muhammad ibn Risa al-Shafi, Imam Ahmad ibn Muhammad ibn Hanbal, the four schools of thought, and you definitely, and the people of Indonesia, are one of them. You have to follow one of them. They all say that music is haram. The consensus of the scholars. So, do I follow the Quran? Do I follow the Sunnah? Do I follow the four schools of thought? the four schools of thought, or do I follow some Tom, Dick, and Harry who say that it's, it's permissible for a sheikh, a respectable sheikh, to uh, swing right and left and sing songs and maybe dance and chant for the sake of da'wah. And tomorrow, maybe they'll say it's permissible for the sake of da'wah to go to a discotheque and dance with women and maybe call them for dinner for the sake of da'wah. What else? What kind of da'wah is this? Da'wah to another religion? Islam is so simple and pure. Islam is your connection with Allah Azza wa Jal. It cannot be misled. You cannot mislead people and misguide people through what only the Sheikh says. Simon says music is halal. Simon says it's okay to dance women and, 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 and men together. It's okay to mix. It's okay to handshake. And it's okay to do this and that. And everything goes against Islam. What else is Islam? That is why we have to be careful of those who claim to be scholars or to be uh, uh, students of knowledge who divert people from following the Quran and Sunnah and ask people to only follow themselves. This is not Islam. All individuals evaporate in front of the Quran and Sunnah. They all dissolve in the Sharia. We only glorify the Quran and the Sunnah. And believe me by Allah, if music was halal, I would be the first to listen to it and I'll be the first to play it even. But it's haram. And there is no doubt, none whatsoever, on this topic and on this issue. I believe we have